Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Now in this video, we will be building a weather app only in Python and Tkinter. We don't need any other frameworks or libraries apart from those two. Now, before we get into it, I just have a couple of housekeeping issues I want to mention. So first of all, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe. It really helps me grow my channel and make more videos like this. And second, if you're interested to know more about Python development, check out my course in the description. All right, that's it. Now let's get into it. For this project, we will create a small weather application that actually communicates with a backend API and retrieves real-time weather. Okay, I want to give you an overview of what we will be building exactly. So for the purposes of this app, we will be using Tkinter for the UI. Okay, so we discussed Tkinter in the previous section. So have a look at that if you um, haven't seen it. And we will be using the requests library to communicate with the backend API. So what we will do, we will um, go to the website that we will use. We will research the API, see how we can access it, download whatever information we need. Then we will go and build our API structure. So the interface, we will build the communication with the backend, and then we will fill out all the information here. So the final result will look something like this. We have a field where we can search for cities and we have a button search weather, right? So here we can put um, whatever cities um, we want. Basically, as long as they are available in the backend API repository, we will get an information. So I can search for something like Rome. Okay, we will um, get, um, you know, information for Rome. For some reason, it's called Lome. I don't know what that is. Let's search for Paris. So the results actually depend on the backend API, which I don't really have control over. So there you go. That's why you might get some um, weird results. But we can search for big cities like New York. Um, we can get the weather. We can search for Tokyo. So there you go. And what we will display is the city and country name. We will display an icon. Um, we will have the icons available in the, uh, the respective video. And we will display the current temperature, both in Celsius and in Fahrenheit, and the current weather conditions. Okay, so we're going to start, of course, by building the structure of our UI before we actually communicate with the backend. All right, so let's go ahead and start building our project. So we're going to put together the UI that will serve as the structure for our application. And then later on, we will use our request library to communicate um, to the back end to retrieve some information to display in our UI. All right, so of course, we're going to use the tkinter uh, library for our uh, UI application. So let's go ahead and create a new file. And I'm going to call this weather app. All right, I'm going to uh, import from tkinter. I'm going to import everything. So I'm going to have an app as a TK. Um, let's create, let's put a title. Um, we're going to have app.title and it's going to be something like weather app. Then let's put a geometry as well. For me, I think I would like to have something around 700 times 350. And then down below, we're going to have um, the main loop. All right, so we have our window. Let's go ahead and put some elements on our um, on our window. So first of all, I want to put a entry where the user can input the city that they are trying to search for. So I'm going to have city underscore text. It's going to be a string var. Then we'll have city underscore entry is going to be an entry that takes the app as parameter and a text variable equals city text. Okay. And then city entry dot pack to place it on the screen. All right, um, let's have a look, see how big this entry is by default. Yeah, that should be fine. We don't need to, to um, set the width. All right, so now that we have that, let's create a button. I'm going to have a search underscore BTN equals button. That's going to take the app. It's going to have a text something like search weather. 
let's have a width of 12 and a command equals search. Okay, let's create the function search that we're going to need. So up above here, I'm going to define the function search. And for now, I'm just going to pass. Now, um, we have our uh, button. So I'm going to say search button dot pack to place it on the screen. All right, so let's let's put the elements um, that will contain the information that we retrieve from the back end. So first of all, we're going to have a location label. I want the city name and the country at the top. So I'm going to have a location underscore LBL for label. Then we're going to have a label that takes the app. The text is going to be label. Uh, let's say location. And let's add a font, something like bold and 20. Oh, I need an equal sign here. So bold and 20. And I'm going to say location label dot pack. So add it on the screen as well. Then we're going to have the image that corresponds to the actual um, image of the weather condition. So we're going to have image equals label. That takes the app and has a bitmap, an empty string for now. We don't have images at the moment, but we will do that in the next video. So that is the image. We're going to put image.pack. We're going to display it on the screen. Then we need two more labels, one for the temperature. So we're going to have temp underscore LBL label that takes the app. And the text is going to be, let's put temperature for now. Temperature. OK, temp dot label dot pack. All right, so that is our temperature. And finally, we'll have the weather label. That's going to be a label app. And the text is going to be weather, which will be the text version of the weather condition. And weather underscore LBL dot pack will simply display that on the screen. So that is kind of the structure for our um, interface. So let's go ahead and run this and see what we get. Right, so this is what we'll get. So here we will search for a location. We'll click the search button. Then we will display the result of that location, the image, the temperature, and the weather. What I'd like to do now first is just remove these placeholders. Um, so that's going to be the location placeholder. So the text, I don't want anything there at the moment, the temperature and the weather. We will fill these out uh, when we actually get some information from the backend um, API with the uh, search function. All right, so before we continue coding, let's get a um, idea of what uh, backend API we will be calling. Okay, so um, what I'd like to do here, I'd like to open up a browser window and let's search for weather API. Okay, so the first one that we get is the openweathermap.org, or, or at least that's the one I get here. So we're going to use this API here, and I'm going to put a link to this, um, to this website um, attached to this lecture. So you can either find it through Google or get it in the link. So what you need to do in order to use this API, you need an API key. Okay, so without that key, we cannot access um, the functionality of that API. So what I would suggest is you sign up for this account. Um, I cannot give you my ID because it is quite limited. So the free version is limited. There's no need to pay for anything else, but um, that's why we cannot um, share. I cannot share my key with my students because um, that will go over the limit and it won't work. So what you need to do is you need to sign up for a free account and that will basically give you access to the API um, for free for the limited version that we're going to be using in this course. So for me, I already have an account. So if I am signed in, I will get to this screen. So what you want to do is you want to go to the API keys and that will contain the um, API key that you need. OK, so if we go here, then you will have an API key similar to this one. Otherwise, you can simply generate another key and 
um, have it um, created for you so that you can access that information. So um, with this key, we're going to copy it. OK, I'm going to copy this key. And I'm going to go to the uh, PyCharm and I'm going to create a new file here. That's going to be called config.ini. OK, so here is uh, we need to put the API underscore key section. And let's say a value key equals and here you will paste your uh, particular key, the one that you got from um, that website. All right, so with that in place, let's go back to the website and we're going to click on the menu um, that says API. So that will give us some information about what API we can access. And the one I'd like to use in this, um, in this application, you can of course use multiple ones, but the one I'd like to use is the current weather data. So I'm going to click on this API doc. And if we scroll down a bit, we will see a, a structure for our API. Okay, so here we have the um, API address with the uh, query city name and your app ID key here. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy this link. Okay, and I'm going to put it in code. So uh, moving to the weather app, I'm going to create a variable here at the top that says something like URL, and I'm going to paste that in. I'm going to remove the city name. I'm going to leave the curly brackets here and I'm going to remove your API key. Now, if you don't have this, if you couldn't find this on the website, I will put a link to this um, on the in the resources as well. So you can also copy it from there if you prefer. Now, moving back to the website, we have um, a few more, a bit more information here. So first of all, we have the um, API call. But once we get that information, what is the format of that information is going to be in? So let's open an example of API call. So for instance, it's London. And here we have a JSON. Now that's not very clear. So let me just copy that and search for a JSON formatter just to kind of um, arrange it nicely in the page. So let's process that. And there we go. So this is the structure of the JSON that we will receive. So here we can see that we have the weather, which is the main, uh, which, uh, which are the weather conditions. We have an icon, okay, the, an icon ID rather. Then we have temperature and we have, uh, what else are we going to need? We're going to need the name of the city. Okay, so you have a lot more information that you can use. Um, we're going to be limiting ourselves to this, uh, these pieces of information for the, um, the application that we're building. But of course, you can extend the application as much as you like um, later on after we finish uh, the videos. All right, so now the only thing that is missing is the icons. Okay, so the icons are also available from this website. So if you go back to the API structure, if you scroll down, somewhere close to the end of the page. Let me have a look. There we go. We have a list of weather condition codes. And if we click on that link, then we will get the weather icons. Let's scroll down a bit. And here you get all the icons that are uh, available. So you can download them each individually one by one and put them in your code. So if we look in the PyCharm, I have put all my icons here. Okay, so you have 01D, 01M, N, which is day and night, day and night, day and night, and so on, right? If we open one of these, we will get sunshine for the 01D. Let's see the four, it's cloudy. Okay, so we're gonna be using these icons in our codes. All right, so I think now we have everything we need to actually call the API. So the first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to extract the key from the config.ini file. So here at the top, I'm going to say from config parser import config parser. OK, so we're going to use the config parser to parse our ini file. OK, so after the URL, we're going to say config underscore file equals um, config.ini. Then the config is going to be config parser. We're going to say config.read. 
the config file. And the API underscore key is going to be config of API key of key. Okay, so you can of course print this out to the console to check that you have uh, retrieved the correct key. All right, next up, let's go ahead and define a function called get underscore weather that will take a city. Okay, so we're going to use the um, the requests API. So I'm going to import here requests. I think I need to install the package. You might not need this if you have already installed the requests um, API. All right, so now that that is in place, let's go ahead and get a result equals requests dot get. We have our URL that we need to format. So now we have both pieces of information. So the first one is going to be city and the second one is going to be API key. Okay. So we have our results. Now we can check if um, result. First of all, let's go ahead and print our result dot content just to make sure that we have something else we can um, return none. Okay, so the weather will actually return some information, but for now it will return none if the result is not um, not 200 okay. All right, so let's run the code and I'm hoping to see something here on the console. Oh, actually, we haven't actually run the get weather. So let's um, call the function get weather, let's say London and run this. Of course, we have an invalid URL, so uh, we need to add HTTP colon double forward slash. Run that again, and that gives us information from the backend API. Okay, so now that we know um, that we are retrieving information from the backend, we can continue processing that information. So we have, I'm going to remove this print result here. I'm going to just transform this into a JSON. So I'm going to say result.json. Okay, it makes it easier to extract information. So what I would like this get weather uh, function to return is a tuple that will contain some information like this. We're going to have a city, country, we want the temperature, let's say Celsius. Then we have, we want the temperature in Fahrenheit. I hope I'm spelling that correctly. Um, we also want an icon and we want the weather, okay, the conditions in a text form. So the function will return a tuple like this. All right, so we need to extract all that information. So the first one is city, it's going to be JSON. Um, let's have a look at the uh, response. So the city is basically down here below, it's going to be just a name, okay? so we can extract that easily. So I'm going to say name. Okay, now the country is, where do we get that? So the country is here under cis country. Okay, so JSON cis and country. All right, so we have the country as well. Now we need the temperature Celsius. The problem is that this um, API gives us a temperature, but this one is in uh, Kelvin. Okay, so we want to extract that Kelvin temperature and transform it both into Celsius and into Fahrenheit. Okay, so I'm going to have here temp underscore Kelvin is going to be JSON of, I didn't even check, it's main temp. Okay, so main temp. Now, how do we transform temp Kelvin into temp Celsius? All right, let's Google that. So um, Kelvin to Celsius. So we have the formula down here, minus 273.15, okay? Temp Kelvin minus 273.15. Okay, easy enough. Now, temp Fahrenheit. And I'm guessing this won't be as easy. So we're going to convert 
Kelvin to Fahrenheit. All right, yeah, so the, uh, why not make it more complicated? So there we go, uh, let's transform that. So minus 273.15. So we have the same thing that we have here. I'm gonna put this in parentheses. Multiplied by nine divided by five plus 32. Multiplied by nine divided by five plus 32. So that's gonna give us Fahrenheit. Okay, good enough. So. What else do we need? We need the icon. So the icon is gonna be a JSON. Let's see where we get that. So looking in here, we get it at the top under weather icon, okay? Weather icon. So that's the icon and then we have the weather. It's gonna be JSON, it's gonna be weather and main. You can also get the description if you want. I'm just going to get the main. So weather and main. All right, so we have all pieces of information that we need. So let's go ahead and uh, create our tuple. So I'm just going to call this final equals parentheses city, country, temp Celsius, temp Fahrenheit, icon, and weather. Okay, good enough. And then we're going to return final. So that is what the weather will give us. So let's actually have a print here and see what the information actually is. So running that, um, I'm getting a small error. Oh, yes. So basically, I think this is a list and we are trying to get an integer. So let's have a look at weather. So weather, yeah, weather is in fact a list. Okay, you can see the list here. So we want to get the first element. So we can say zero and same here, we have zero. Okay, so the first element of weather. So let's run that again. All right, there we go. So we are getting the correct tuple here. I will assume that this is correct because 10 degrees for London seems pretty much correct, right? So um, we have 10 and 50 in Fahrenheit. All right, so the final thing that's left for us to do is to actually use the information that we received from the backend API to update our local UI. All right, so um, I'm gonna remove the print statement here. And what we need to do is we need to fill out the search function. Okay, so first of all, we're gonna have, um, we're gonna retrieve the city name. So city equals um, city underscore text dot get. Okay, now the weather is going to be get weather of the city. So let's see if we actually got something. So if we say if weather, then we need to update the UI. So let me say pass for now. Else we need to display a message to the user saying that the city was not found. So for that, we're gonna use the message box. I'm gonna go up here in tkinter and I'm gonna say from tkinter, import message box, okay? So down below in the else, we're gonna say message box dot show error. The title is error, let's say, and the message cannot find find city and let's put the actual result here dot format city okay let's try this out so running I'm gonna put some random characters here search cannot find city whatever this is all right so there we go the error path is correct now what happens if we get correct information so we can simply update our UI so I can say location underscore label of text is going to be, I have two curly braces here because we have city and country dot format. We have the first element of weather. So weather zero and weather of one. You could probably name this result it might be clearer, but for now we're going to leave it as it is. So the image, we're going to update the bitmap um, element or attribute 
then we're gonna say something like uh, we need to place the position of the icon so I'm gonna say here weather underscore icons forward slash here we need the name of the icon so uh, curly brackets dot PNG they're all PNG okay so that should be fine dot PNG dot format and here we will need weather of this is I think position zero one two three four Okay, so we have the position four, image bitmap. Now we need the temperature and we'll update the text equals. Now here we need to limit the number of um, digits after the dot. Okay, so the decimal digits, we will probably get around 10 of them. We want only one or two. Okay, so I'm going to put a string here, curly brackets. I'm going to put colon dot to f okay so that will limit the um, string to um, two digits after the uh, dot okay and then so that is celsius let's put a um, degrees if you don't know where that is it's basically on a mac it's shift option eight okay shift option eight for a mac on a pc i'm sorry i don't exactly know where it is i think it might be on the top left um, key of your keyboard, but if not you can of course search for degree symbol on Google and you will find it there Okay, so we have degree Celsius and then we have the same thing dot to F degree Fahrenheit Okay dot format and here we have weather position 2 and weather position 3 Okay, so position 2 and 3 all right, so we have that in place. The last thing we need is weather label of text, and that's going to be weather position 5. Okay, so I think that's pretty much all we need for this application. Okay, so let's go ahead and run it and test it out. All right, so let's try London, search weather, and there we go. We get city of london gb we get the icon 10 degrees and rain okay 50 in fahrenheit so that's pretty good let's have a look at paris paris is similar let's have a look at new york new york is sunny and five degrees celsius so there you go that is how you would build a weather app now of course you could extend this um, application in multiple ways. So first of all, you could display more of the information that we actually receive from this weather API. Okay, I have the 2.5 uh, version here. So this gives us a lot more information. So you could display more information here. You could also um, add a field for the country because I think the uh, searches are quite limited for cities, right? So you would find London UK but you won't find if there's a London in the US then you won't find it there right so it's quite limited so if you want to add another uh, field here for the country then you could do that and call a more targeted more precise API and of course you could search for uh, more APIs that are available and implement those as well in a larger um, application a more structured application but the main idea behind all these API calls is the same, okay? We have the same idea. We have a URL that has a key and a uh, query, okay? So that, once you fill that in and you request that information, you will get back a JSON, transform it in whatever way you like, extract all the information, and then do something with it in your application. So there you go. That is my little uh, weather application. It's an example app, but feel free to extend it and publish it and do whatever you like with it. It's really up to you. All right, guys, so that's it for this video. Thank you so much for following along. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and why not subscribe to my channel for more videos like this and check out the links in the description if you want more information. I'll see you soon.